Bark grafting is the technique commercial orchards use to change the top of a tree to a new variety. Bark grafting works well for apples, pears, and European plums, not so well for other kinds of fruit. All combinations of apples I have tried have grafted well together. All combinations of pears have also been intercompatible. However, with a few rare exceptions, apples and pears will not graft together. In all grafting, we talk about the top, or scion, the part we graft on, and the stock, or rootstock, the bottom, that we graft on to. For bark grafting, you cut your scions in the winter when the trees are dormant, and you'll keep them dormant until it's time to do grafting in the spring. You want vigorous, one-year-old twigs. The best part of the twig is the middle third. The upper part is thin and weak. The middle part is best. The lower part is second best. It's often too thick and difficult to work. Here's a cross section of a good part of the twig. Note the whitish central core. This is a corky tissue that has no structural strength. This should be a small fraction of the full diameter of the twig. A quarter or less. In these sections from near the tip of a twig, the core is larger and less well defined. This would be weak, brittle, and hard to work. The best size for scions is a quarter inch or a little more. Thin twigs like this are less than ideal. However, some varieties of fruit only produce thin twigs, so that's all you'll have to work with. Large, thick twigs like this have a lot of strength, but they're difficult to shape. Scions with large, knobby spur buds like this are second best, although sometimes that's all you have to work with. These buds will open out into blooms and take longer to resume twig growth. Store the scions in plastic bags like any other fresh produce. If you have more than one kind, put in a label, then store the scions in the refrigerator till spring. The true test of the time to do bark grafting is if the bark will peel, as you'll see later, but a rule of thumb is when the trees are in bloom. You can do it later, as late as summer, but your scions will be getting stale and your grafts will not have as much of the season to grow. When I teach grafting, the most common problem people have is a knife that's not sharp enough. You don't need a special grafting knife. A knife like this is fine. However, to make it easy, get a perfectly new sharp blade. Even the unused end of a blade like this will have been dulled by pressing on the inside of the knife handle. You need a knife so sharp that you can easily cut paper-thin slices of wood, as you'll see momentarily. When you take your scions out in the spring, they should be in good shape, not shriveled at all. You'll carve the twig ends into an asymmetric wedge like this, which I'll illustrate. One thing you'll have to practice is making absolutely flat cuts like this. The test is, in bright sunlight, as you turn the twig, the shadow falls across the cut surface all at once. Common errors are cupping, twisting, and whittling into facets. To form the asymmetric wedge, you'll make the back cut first. Choose a bud with an inch or two of twig below it. Flip the twig 180 degrees so the bud is down. Take off paper-thin slices of wood till you have an even cut that comes up about as far as the bud, but on the opposite side of the twig. This forms the back cut. Dress it up if you need to. Flip the bud back up, then roll it about 45 degrees to the side. Then make the front cut also smooth and flat. 
Cut off the cyan piece just above the bud. Be careful not to touch the cut surfaces. If you have plenty of cyan wood, you can cut two and three bud pieces, but make sure the lowest bud is opposite the back cut. You can cut the cyan pieces beforehand as much as the night before, but store them in a very clean bag and make sure they do not dry out at all. Choose a branch you're going to graft and cut it off cleanly. Cut vertical slits down the bark. Peel back the bark on one side of the slit and push the cyan in. The bark flap covers the shorter wedge cut. The longer wedge cut goes against the wood of the stock. This is the test of whether bark grafting will work. The bark must slip, which means to peel from the wood easily and cleanly without any shredding or splitting. Notice that a small amount of the cyan's back cut extends above the stock. If the cyan's were pushed in so far that their bark was against the stock, their expanding growth could wedge them away. When you have all your cyan's in, you must seal all cut surfaces to keep them from drying out. The ideal material is grafting wax, which I'll show later but you can use modeling clay. You don't want to use liquid sealer at this stage because it would run down into the cracks and keep the plant cells from healing together. You can cover these small exposed back cuts with wax or with liquid sealer as shown next. Take your time at this stage and cover all the cracks well. Here I demonstrate covering the back cuts with liquid sealer. Also seal the cut ends of the scions. The scions will not get much moisture from the stock until they heal to it, except for a small amount that diffuses from the wet wood. For this reason, it's a good idea to seal the cut end of the stock so any moisture in it is more available to the scions. After you have the sealer on, you can wrap the whole stock with black electrical tape. This gives a little extra pressure and stability to the graft. Wrap as tightly as you can. A tree is made of wood. You're not going to hurt it by wrapping too tight. Don't use masking tape, which has no strength, or duct tape, which is fibrous and won't stretch. This yellow sealer, which I'll also show later, is the ideal material, but you can also use exterior latex paint. Or black tree tar. This yellow sealer will be dry within half an hour and you only need one coat. With latex paint you should come back and do two or three coats. At this point the grafts don't look like much. This was April, but here they are again in May. And in June. Notice that sprouts have grown from below the graft. You should remove these, as shown here. Here are the grafts in July and in August. Trees don't grow much in late summer. They're storing up their strength for the next year's growth, so you should do bark grafts as early as possible. In October, with the leaves falling, you can see the season's growth. Some always do better than others. This one with the largest growth, we would train to replace the top of the tree. If you do this a lot, here is the best grafting wax and the best sealer. The address where you can buy these is in the caption.